Hello folks, we're going to have a very quick look at uh, Budget 2023. To start with, it's not a snapshot, it's not a highlights reel, it's not something that uh, that's like a document. And so we're going to do some overview on what are the important takeaways from it. A little bit of um, academic learning, a little bit on highlights. It's not an enumeration of everything the government is doing, although the presentation is super comprehensive. So many thanks to Pranav for it. The PPT is rather good. That's available as a PDF on a description. So click on the link, you can see that. So I'm not going to focus on details and numbers as much as I'm going to focus on themes and highlights. So keep that in mind. I'm not go over every single point. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a laborious exercise. I'm very thankful that our uh, finance minister has done this. So I'm not going to do that. It's not going to be a patch on what, uh, what the speech that she delivered. I'm not looking to do a complete recap of it. I'm going to give an overview. So, if, but the detail in this in this presentation is rather good. It's fabulous. It's available as a PDF. Just go to description or comment and click that and see that. Right? So let's go on. Uh, what is the budget really? Uh, it's, it's a documentation of what money is coming in and what money is going out. How much money are we getting that comes into the system? How much are we spending? It goes out of the system. And right? so very simple, not, not, not rocket science. Right? So, but um, compared to the budget classification that we perhaps do for households, for uh, governments, it's a little different. And for households, we'll talk about income, expenses and savings. And so uh, very usually, I mean, almost 100% of the time, uh, for government, there'll be income, expenses, and the gap financed by by loans. And so our conventional way of thinking about income and savings has been income, a part of that is expense and some savings are there. But governments world over, they're used to condition to spending more than what comes in, and the gap being bridged by market borrowing. So the, 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 the way they look at it is completely slightly different. But otherwise, it's a, it's a tally of what comes in, what goes out. Right? What is important here is a very, very nice way of looking at what receipts come in, what comes in. And so there's non-tax receipts, revenue receipts, and capital receipts. Right? So which is the most important, the most sizable is going to be this revenue receipts. Non-tax receipts is uh, government owns a lot of companies. The profits made by these companies are, are given back to the government in some form. Sometimes they're not always profitable. They don't always give back. But the share, government share of profits of these companies comes back. Capital receipts is when, when government decides to maybe privatize, maybe sell some part of its original, originally owned by government enterprise, that comes in. These two are actually not so big. This is a big deal. Corporation tax, income tax, uh, GST are the three big buckets. The other two are small. Wealth tax, customs tax, etc. are all small. Corporate tax, corporation tax, income tax, GST. GST is, we all know what GST is. Right? So there have been so many jokes on GST that all of us know what GST means. Income tax is what people pay. Corporation tax is what companies pay. These are the big uh, incoming things or money coming into the government pot. Do that, right? So this is the ball game, really, not these two. In terms of scale, very often when I used to look at uh, government budgets and documents, the staggering scale used to mess with my mind. And so I never got a sense of what is big, what is small. They'll talk about lakhs of crores. They'll say 40,000 crores were allotted to that. To me, it seems like a big amount. But in the context of India's budget, it's not such a big deal. And so just to wind our head around the numbers takes a while, which is why I want to give a sense that this is a big deal. These two, not so much. Right? This is important, this is super important. Right? Revenue expenditure and capital expenditure. Right? So, there are lots of subheadings inside this which you'll be able to see. Uh, but the funda wise, this is keep the lights on spending. This is grow for the next cycle spending. Right? So if you're thinking about government running, you have to pay salaries, you have to pay rent, you have to pay electricity, forget government. If you're keeping thinking about a small company or running the company, what they need to do, keep the lights on. This is building for the next cycle. If you take a company like us, we do online education to our uh, software hosting, our employees, our, all of those are coming out of this category. Suppose we go out and say we're going to create a whole new way of teaching, go and invest in technology and cameras and all that, that will come here. What is going to be an expense in this cycle will come here. What is going to build an asset for next cycle will come here. If India builds a huge set of brilliant ports, massively sound road infrastructure, rail infrastructure, water infrastructure that will come here. It pays lots of salaries, pensions, interest that will come here. Right? So this is keep the lights on spending. This is invest for the next cycle spending. 
So actually speaking, we, when we think about fiscal deficit, that's the gap between what the company, what the country spends and what it brings in. There are terms such as fiscal deficit, revenue deficit, primary deficit. Again, description is given in rather great detail in another video for which you will find the link here, but read up all of them. And fiscal deficit is overall, revenue deficit is on how much you get in and what is your revenue expenditure. Primary deficit, from there you step out interest payments, then you get to primary deficit. So, in interesting terms, but, but fiscal deficit per se is not wrong. And so, very often we are conditioned to thinking, oh, there is a deficit, you are spending more than you earn. This must be badly run. Almost every country in the world, throughout the history of economic, has had predominantly deficit run mechanism. Governments can borrow and fund their growth and, uh, and existence way better than human beings or corporates can. And therefore, they must do this because that's when they can fund for growth and take care of their, their people. So, the, the term deficit itself is per, not per se wrong. Deficit should, should be predominantly driven by this and not this. And keeping the lights on spent should be reasonable. Investing for the next cycle, I should not worry about borrowing. And to give you a parallel, if you're thinking about uh, revenue deficit, if you're having lots of revenue expenditure, suppose you earn, say, 30,000 a month, you go to, to this and you have go to a lot of restaurants and, and travel all the time and it costs you 34,000. Then you're having a deficit each month that gets piled on. However, if you have 30,000 as your, as your income and you've taken an education loan for which you spend 10K as EMI every month and within this 18, you want to squeeze it and therefore you don't make any month on month savings, but a part of it is being funded for something that's super important. You bought that and that can fund your next cycle of income, then it's all right. So spending on this is slightly better than spending on this. Wonderful. Let's go to some, some, some before we go further, let's look at this, this beautiful chart. Straight away, I must tell you that this is from Stats of India, a fabulous, fabulous, fabulous uh, person or, or entity or whatever you call it. They have done this rather good chart. So I'm going to spend some time looking at this. It's beautifully done. I must say, this is not our work, this is Stats of India. So go check out what they have done. It's beautiful. And so, I'm saying, look, as I said, the three big inflow items are income tax, corporate tax, GST. Right? They amount, they account for a giant chunk of what comes in. They put this as a, as a bar here. This is what comes in. This is what goes out. And so, these are the three big chunks of where, where money comes in. And then, excise duty, customs, and other taxes are much smaller, as you can see. Right? Then there are loans and small savings in PF. This is this is what the government borrows. This is what the government kind of earns. And our taxes are government's income. Something to think about. And so one share goes to share states. The remaining is what the government can spend on. And so they've broken it in two parts, which is expenditure on schemes and interest payments and transfers and all that. So this is the salaries, pensions, all of those come here. Transfer to states comes here. Interest payments, if you notice, is huge for India because we have a pile of borrowing sitting on. That's all right. This shouldn't become unwieldy, but this the idea of having interest payments is not crippling. Governments have interest payments all the time. And so interest payments in other currencies, they are a risk. Lots of Indian risk is Indian interest payments are in, in rupee interest payments. So technically, this is not such a big risk, therefore. Um, the, the, the expenditure on schemes, the central schemes and others, the, the, the PM, this, this Jan Tantra Yodana, etc, etc, all the schemes that we keep hearing the names of, which I cannot, I'm not able to recall at the top of my head straight away, those come here. And the important distinction here, some of those schemes come under revenue expenditure, some come under capital expenditure. And this, just because it's expenditure on schemes, does not mean it's completely capital expenditure. Lots of those schemes, especially subsidies, are all part of uh, revenue expenditure, not capital expenditure. So this distinction is not capital and revenue. And so I am going to request Stats of India to put it as revenue expenditure and capital expenditure to see it slightly differently. But yeah, that's a battle for a different day. So this is this is what goes out. This is where money comes in from. This gap, it looks like money coming in is more than money going out. No, no. This is the money that comes as receipts. This is the money that is filled in from borrowing. This is what the government earns. This is what it spends. This seems bigger, no, no, that goes for states. This delta, which seems as money coming in, it's actually money that they've not earned, but money they've kind of borrowed. 
what is the theme for for this year our national minister put up put together seven pillars called saptarishi inclusive development reaching last mile infrastructure and investment unleashing the potential green growth youth power and financial sector and so that the the big themes this year if you ask me was about infrastructure and investment and all of these are have some salient points some very interesting points uh, inclusive development was also a theme uh, infrastructure and investment is probably a bigger theme and so uh, indian government has uh, been all right uh, fiscally this year and probably the next year as well not great not not completely cleaned up the act not out of the woods none of that but all right and so we are finally saying there's a growth story to be picked here there is something that we can generate by investing into the system so we are saying look we will spend more in building the country this year we been doing it for a while now we did it last year we want to do it this year chances are we'll do it next year as well right so this is the, the really big thing right uh, inclusive development is the mechanism of bringing people together making sure that nobody is left out reaching last mile is make sure that the, the people who are most deprived the most people living in the most challenging circumstances they get something unleashing the potential about the next wave uh, what can happen a little later how do we create competencies for what can be crucial 5 years from now 8 years from now 10 years from now green growth of course we all know what what that means there's been some amount of funding that has gone into this as well now but this is not a new theme our government has going been going towards green for a while now okay. youth power and financial sector we will see what the points are there um agricultural i'm not going to read up on all of these i'm going to make one point but maybe one pick one thing from each of them this is an interesting stream a uh, global hub for millets we really want to be known as the place for millet there has been a, a movement in india wider also to say hey uh, we need to not be heavily dependent on uh, just of two or three cereals we need to broaden and then have more the government is spending a lot of money on research and in in uh, for lack of a better word in in, in we are going to try to mainstream these it's already happened in several urban places like the extent to which we can find a range of millets in our in our stores now this is dramatically different from how it was 10 years ago uh, but i think the government will take more effort in in, in aggressively mainstreaming this and planning to become a global hub for millets i don't think it's going to be severely revenue accretive or export driven or anything like that but it could be a nice uh, lifestyle change and, and it, it could be a, a good sweet spot for india to chase Right. I'm not going to read everything. I'm going to focus on maybe one, two bullet points in each test, each of these things. Uh, but make sure that you you have a look at the PDF so that you know all the points. Uh, sickle cell anemia is something that we are targeting and saying, look, we will eliminate this in in in, in deep into the future. Not it's not a three year, ten year plan. It's far deeper into the future. That is something that we are doing. A bunch of ton of nursing colleges are going to be uh, opened up. They are going to be co-located with existing hospitals. The government is super clear about that. you are spending a lot of money on teacher training as well so aggressively for towards developing the skill development centers that's a that's one thing for uh, for in, 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 in for inclusive growth leading on to youth development so both put together this is going to happen a lot of it uh, reaching the last mile this is not a, a huge amount of money i don't think it's being spent uh, again the, the 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 teacher training parts This is a crucial part. The numbers are not large. The expenditure is not large, but there is some effort being taken on this front. Uh, again, this is not new. It's been happening, budget after budget. This is another feature to just keep in mind. This this is really the theme. Find the capital expenditure increase to ten lakh crores, up thirty three percent year on year. Uh, this is about three point three percent of GDP, which is significant, which is high. um the, the our financial minister has actually said the effective capex which is it includes the amount of money that the states will be spending on capex will 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 be beyond 4 it'll be closer to 4.5% of gdp which is a substantial number this number that the government is committing to is uh, our government's way of saying look there is a, an india story is coming that, that, that there is a mechanism by which we think that we could be the next driver for growth for the globe and right. maybe not now maybe 10 years from now where we could be a location that can be more well integrated with the world where we could be providing some amount of manufacturing support for the world where we could be a, a, a part of far more global supply chain than we are now so it's a part of integrating with the world even otherwise our our consumption if we make 
for India, that mechanism could be substantial to drive our growth. Uh, and for that, we need roads, railways, ports, motorways, all of them. And as a, as a way of showing confidence in our ability to grow and creating a mechanism where infrastructure is not pulling us back from, from growth, spending tons of money on that. And so 33% year on year increase is significant. 10 lakh crores, a large number. 3.3% uh, of GDP is good. 4.5% effective. 4.5% of GDP is also good. Healthy numbers and we are not pulling back from investment. A bunch of loans continue to be given to states on the condition that they will be spent on infrastructure development, not for revenue expense. That they are very clear about. 2.4 lakh crore for railways is huge. The amount of uh, the big spending is going to be on railways and roadways. On railways, this allocation is huge. See, the government is saying we're going to transform the, the railway system in India over the next five years, seven years. So the the extent of money coming in here is it could transform the country. And so we had a, a one one of the legacies, so-called, of the of the of, of having the, the great Brits in our country for a long time was the railway system. And again, it's not something that is taken for granted, and we're not fawning over and saying thanks to them. They did several bad things, but one of the few good things was said to be the railway thing, which is actually pretty decent. Uh, but our, and our railway mechanism is brilliant. The way it is run, the way it functions is, is, is marvelous. Right? Uh, but I, the, the government is saying we are doubling down on it and we will make it a driver for growth by providing connectivity. They're, they're thinking of exclusive freight lines. They're thinking of making the railways a backbone for people transport and freight transport. Uh, and if this happened, that could end up being phenomenal for supporting all the growth that, that we, we are hoping to have over the next decade. So this is a large number. This is a large number. This is not um, not sugar-coated numbers, not, not numbers that are made dressed up to look good. These are significant numbers. If they are actually well spent, they could support growth. And as I'm hoping they would. Like the, this is the real deal. This number, this number, and this, especially these two. That's the real deal. Uh, when you're talking about unleashing the potential, obviously we need to talk about artificial intelligence. We, we've been told, India has been uh, mentioned in several times that we are not making sufficient investments in the, in AI and the US is ahead of us, China is ahead of the US, all kinds of things. So there had to be some mention of AI somewhere. And so that did happen. So three centers of excellence in, in India's institutions that are going to start. Um, I don't think this is going to bridge the gap. I don't think we're going to suddenly overnight become AI powerhouses. A lot of times in AI, we are a little downstream. Somebody doing the really juicy stuff, we're doing the derivative stuff in that. It's not going to get caught up in three years, four years. I'm hoping, as, as, a, as an Indian, that uh, AI is not transformative in a hurry. That we get to catch up on what AI can do before AI really starts doing fantastic things. This is probably one bid to do a, a, a catch up on that. It is important that we do some R&D, some research spending on, on AI from first principles, from, from getting onto the, onto, the, onto the AI supply chain more at the beginning, not at the fag end as we are, we are on right now. Uh, hopefully it will be meaningful, hopefully something will come out of it say five years, six years from now. But we are behind, we are behind on any conversation on AI. This is a bit to say, hey, let, let, let's let's see that. I'm not jumping with George, it's not going to be game changing, it's not going to be dramatic. It is it is one thing where we are saying, okay, we'll also get onto this train. Uh, green growth, again, a bunch of initiative, the, uh, uh, the uh, Gobardhan scheme, a bunch of these. Uh, to be honest, none of this is new, none of this is dramatic, none of this is large. A lot of this is happening already. Uh, subsidies for electronic vehicles, subsidies for solar panels, subsidies for all forms of renewables are already on. They are already on at full throttle. Uh, investments into, into, into hydrogen, they are also there, they are also on. There is nothing here that is dramatically new or could be a violent game changer in this place. Not because we are not doing anything, but quite a few initiatives that the government uh, wanted to do in this, they are already on. The, the big movements in, in terms of how the subsidies can be set up, the entire chain can be set up, the mechanism can be set up, has already been done. This is not new. Uh, 30 skill international centers to be set up, the, the Vikas Yojana 4.0. I, again, there is there is there is there is a mechanism to say we'll train teachers, we'll set up more training systems, we'll do a, lots of activities for upskilling across different segments, rural and urban. But again, this is again in, in a budget, the government has to say a lot of things. This is one of those lot of things. The real themes here are are, uh, are on capital expenditure. What can do in railways, 
how we are making a commitment to saying hey this is where we put money where our mouth is this is how we'll drive our growth that's the real deal Finance sector has been interesting. They've done some amount of stuff for uh, senior citizens. Uh, they've given some small saving schemes for, for women. Uh, the, the, more than this, the information registry and data processing center, they're super important. I think there is a, there's a credit information deficit in our, in our country. Uh, therefore, it, it lends itself to abuse and lends itself to uh, kind of squeezing of the people who really need it. Deficit. So we are information are for the bottom one third of our pyramid, our information richness is rather poor. So it, it sets them up for being exploited by the financial sector and sets up the, the middle one third, the guy that's the schemers and movers for manipulating the system. I think this we've been screaming out for this information registry, which is super important, super crucial. I hope uh, we've had lots of good things in the finance sector, the government run finance sector. RBI has uh, been wonderful. It's been um, one of those fabulous Indian institution that sometimes very frequently does not get enough credit for the amount of great work it does. Uh, we've all heard about the, the, the extent to which UPI has been really good. Uh, the, the rupee card system is good. So lots of good things have happened in the finance sector. The, the, the finance minister did take some time out to tom tom about all of these. The information registry part could be something that uh, that is super useful, super crucial. I'm hoping it comes out really well. The other things are smaller. Does not mean that the financial sector is not doing well or the government is not having a role there. The role is significant and it done lots of useful things. So the, the extent to which the, uh, the RBA and the Indian government have done wonderful things in the financial sector could be the story of the next decade. 